We all know that narcissists need their regular supply. It's what feeds them, essentially. But often, if it's not the partner, it can become the children. And that's incredibly psychologically abusive. So if you're an adult child of a narcissist and want to understand what the hell happened, or if you're trying to co-parent with a narcissist and you want to better protect your children, then do keep watching. nurturing coach channel if you haven't already had a chance to subscribe please do give me a click it really does help today we're looking at narcissistic supply and in particular how children of narcissists fuel the narcissism and become the supply but first of all let's let's look what is supply what do we mean when we, we talk about that and from a psychological perspective what we mean is that a narcissist is completely unable to regulate their own emotions They've had a very disorganised and chaotic upbringing. And so they were never taught how to deal with their emotions. They were never taught by anyone what love, what kindness, what empathy was. So those parts of the brain that deal with emotional regulation and processing, they haven't fully developed. And so essentially a narcissist is still a child emotionally. And when they're in times of stress, which is most of the time for them because of the, the way they feel about themselves, they have this constant feeling of self-inadequacy racing around in them, that really low self-esteem, no self-confidence, a very fragile sense of self. So they always need someone else to bolster them up and, pre and prevent them from collapsing into dysregulation and pain. And what they normally do is they look for um, an adult, a partner, um, or even a, another, even a parent, or even, I don't know, um, a work colleague, for example, it could be. And they, they attach themselves to this person. So say it's a partner, we'll go down that road. So they attach to the partner and they obviously they they do everything they can to make this person fall in love with them so that they can be their supply they do everything they can to get this person into that role of being their attachment figure and their thermostat essentially and i touched on this in the short video that i did earlier in the week which is about co-narcissism because the narcissist isn't able to regulate, so when they find someone else, what they're looking for is, is this person able to meet my needs? Is this person able to pick up my cues, my emotional cues, my verbal cues, and help me to get out of pain? That's, that's the essence of it. Is this person able to get me out of pain? And so at that early stage, that they will try a few bits and pieces, and you won't even notice, because you're not looking for it <laughs> and so they're testing you they're testing to see are you able to meet their emotional needs do they understand are you able to understand them are you able to see when they're struggling when they're upset and once they establish that that's you who you are you are able to recognize those things then essentially you become their supply you become their thermostat or in psychological terms their regulatory object so as a regulatory object your sole purpose is to look for those clues look for those little subtle signs that the narcissist is wobbling they are heading towards um, some sort of emotional distress and to adapt your behavior your words your wants your feelings to stop them from collapsing so let's give an example so the narcissist comes home from work and slams their bag down now you know that's quite an obvious sign but you know from that they 
probably in a bad mood. So you deliberately will amend. If, even if you had something that you wanted to talk to them about that was probably upset them, you'd save it because you didn't want to make matters worse. You knew that if you brought it up now, the rage would be horrendous or they'd storm out and it would be completely pointless. And so you adapt and you probably say, oh, how are you? What's happened? What's happened at work? And you go out of your way to try and balance their emotions, to calm them down, to bring them back to a normal level state. And you do that in lots of different ways and in lots of different circumstances that they've controlled. They essentially condition you to behave in that way, to regulate them. So when the relationship breaks down or when um, you you are no longer able to do it or, or say their husband, if you're a child, if you're the child of a narcissist, then if, if their husband or whoever their primary supply is no longer able to meet that, they for whatever reason, they might be ill, they may not be in town, they, they may have split up, they will then go to the child. The child is the next available supply and they will employ the exact same processes. They will subtly condition the child to recognise those cues. So there will be, say, say um, you came home from school, you're a child and you came home from school and you were singing along but the narcissist was in a bad mood and wanted you to make them feel better. You're singing away, they'll bang something down or they'll make a snidey comment so straight away you stop singing and you put all your attention onto them oh what's the matter is everything okay how can i help what give them a cuddle all those things so you end up regulating them and this is known as something called role reversal which is a really high indicator of abuse and dysfunction within a family and so when the child is the one person being asked to regulate the adult's emotion, that's a really psychologically abusive place for a child to be because that's the parent's job. When a child cries, it's the parent's job to, uh, to comfort, to soothe and to make that child feel better. In a role reversal situation, the child is put in that adult role. They are expected to soothe, comfort and take care of the narcissist feelings. So how do you protect, if you've been through this, how do you move forward? How do you protect children, your own children? And the best thing you can do is for them to really have a very strong sense of who they are, build those boundaries, that favorite word again, but also get them to trust in themselves, help them to express their emotions, help them to be independent, and this is hard when the narcissist is pulling at the strings, but you can still do that in your safe environment. You can instill these skills into them. So that as time goes on, as your skills grow, the narcissist will become less and less able to control them in this way. If you're an adult child, you probably feel right now that you want to take care of everyone. Your role in life is to look after other people. No one cares about you. So the first thing to do is actually for you to take care of yourself. Take some time and look after number one. Really invest in yourself. But buy some sell some candles or a new shirt or whatever it is, something that makes you feel good, something that shows you that you have value because now's the time to step out of that shadow is for you to say, I'm worthy, I, I can support myself. You need to um, learn those skills now to look after yourself, to regulate your own emotions because no one taught you that. You were taught how to look after someone else's but not your own. So now's the time to educate yourself on that. If you'd like support with this, obviously, please do get in touch. It's a really difficult area. and It's a long-lasting legacy of a narcissistic parent. But do email me at inquiries at thenurturingcoach.co.uk. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video. And like I say, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. And if you have, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Take care, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye.